So we kick off this movie with Bond's wardrobe literally out of this world. He's wearing a NASA spacesuit designed for him on Savile Row by Sir Anthony Sinclair. Rubbish! That's not even Bond! Well this time it is Bond. He's wearing his uh, birthday suit. Not quite what we had in mind. Let's fast forward a little bit until there's some fabric involved. Present! So the Union Jack is not quite what I had in mind when I said fabric. Here he is being buried at sea in his fake death. Let's fast forward again. Finally, he's dressed like an officer and a gentleman. Bond, of course, was a naval officer, so he's dressed in a Royal Navy commander's uniform. A double-breasted jacket with eight gilt buttons and jetted pockets. The three stripes on his sleeve denote him as a commander. The naval jacket is, of course, the inspiration for non-military blazers, typically navy with brass buttons. He wears his uniform to his meeting on board with M and Moneypenny, where their office is almost comically transported into a naval version of the regular office. Eventually we see Bond on dry land wearing a lounge suit. Yes, I know, they're actually called lounge suits, which I think is really cool because it makes them sound far more casual than people think of them as. He is wearing a two-piece grey herringbone with an ecru shirt and of course his favourite and navy grenadine necktie. Herringbone is a classic suit pattern but an interesting one available in many different scales and colours. It can lift a suit far above the boring business suit. It's one of my favorite patterns and adds a subtle but interesting vertical stripe to a seemingly plain fabric at a distance making the wearer appeal taller. If you already have one or two suits in your collection, it's a nice one to add. He is still wearing the suit after offing an assassin, but dons the killer's double-breasted olive overcoat, fedora, and strikingly his spectator shoes. You don't see them very often anymore in movies, and continues to wear them in a fight sequence with a Japanese henchman that involves throwing each other through paper walls, a uniquely Japanese fight sequence used a few times in this movie. Bond is back in his businessman mode, or salaryman as they call them in Japan. Bond dresses in a navy mohair two-piece and a light blue shirt and once again a grenadine necktie for his meeting with Mr. Osato, a henchman for Spectre. Earlier in the movie there is a scene, and although Bond doesn't appear in it, it is very interesting to see the typical businessman style of the 1960s. It is a meeting of, uh, I don't know, the G3, I guess. We get a good look at the standard businessman suit. It's worth noting the heavy fabrics they are all wearing. Suits were made of much heavier fabric back then, as central heating wasn't as common. And sadly that is it for this movie's suit collection. Bond wears a variety of active wear and casual clothes, including a pink shirt and grey trousers. But most impressively of all, of course, is the Japanese monsuki or men's kimono. It's usually worn for traditional ceremonies, such as weddings, and I got to wear one when I lived in Japan. I was there for three years, and You Only Live Twice was one of the main influences and piqued my interest in Japanese culture. So next we are looking at my all-time favourite Bond movie, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, starring the best James Bond, George Lazenby. Yeah, you heard me. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you check out the movie before coming back from my style breakdown. I mean, you wouldn't want to miss James Bond in a skirt, would you? It's a kilt! Skirt. <laughs>